Hello my Soka universe. I was initially about to hold off this video but I said this is just too weighty and I wanted to do anyway a final Corona video although I don't think there will be a final Corona video because we're not through it. Everyone is saying we're through it. No we're not. Not in the slightest I think. So uh, just keep on it. But let's assume everything will go fine. We avoid a second wave. Then UEFA made yesterday a Big decision, big meetings um, on the Champions League, on the Europa League, on the Women's Champions League. Um, not only for this season, but also for next year. Also for UEFA Euro 2021. 120, uh, as they keep it. Um, and also the Nations League and the World Cup qualifying process. And it's quite a document. And I actually would say let's go... Uh, through it because it is just very 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 dense i have to say okay i'm very in portugal because the champions league will be played in a um, final eight tournament in lisbon which i think in all single leg which i think is a really cool idea uh to get it over with um there are, of course, some games that still need to be played. And, you know, there's a whole health protocol and, and, and so on. There are some remaining round of 16 ties that have to be either played at the home ground, if that's possible, of the team that still has to play home, like, uh, say, Juventus or Barcelona. Or if that's not possible, they will have to play in Portugal. And for that, while the Final 8 tournament will be played um, in... Um, Lisbon in the Stade de Luz and at the Jose Alvalade, uh, Alvalade, I think, with the final in the Deluge, of course. Um, these games could also take place in Porto and in Guimarães. So uh, that will be interesting how this will uh, work out. Now, this is all happening. The quarterfinal stage between August 12th and August 23rd. So very condensed uh, and the remaining round of 16 uh, matches will be played on 7th and 8th of August. So also quite interested. The quarterfinals, four days in a row. Then semifinals, two days in a row, 18, 19. So 12 to 15 is the quarterfinals, 18, 19 are the semifinals and on the 23rd is the final. Pretty much like a Euro tournament. So uh, that's, that and all uh, matches will kick off at 9 o'clock uh, European time. Interesting. Um, the final for Istanbul will now host the 2021 final and then uh, the remaining finals will also switch. So St. Petersburg in 22, Munich in 23 and Wembley in 24. Europa League has been given to Germany, namely uh, to Cologne, Duisburg, Düsseldorf and Gelsenkirchen, all between the 10th and the 21st of August. Now there are still a round of 16 matches where return legs will be played. Um, on the uh, 5th and 6th of August and again let's see whether they have to be played in Germany or they have to be played where they have to play. For instance last have to play still against Manchester United the return game which I find rather superfluous because we know how this is uh, going. Uh, Inter against Getafe and Sevilla against Roma will be played in a singing match because there was also the first leg postponed and this will be uh, also to be confirmed. Then the final eight matches um, Quarterfinals um, will be played on 10th and 11th of August, semifinals on 16th and 17th, and the final in Cologne on 21st of August. So that's um, interesting. Similar, they have already uh, rescheduled the matches, uh, the final venues, everything shifts for a year later. Also makes some sense. The Women's Champions League has been given to Bilbao and the final was to about to be take place in Vienna is nothing everything stays as fixed um, Vienna is not entirely happy about that but yeah um, the problem is Gothenburg really wanted to have the 21 final for historic reasons um, then uh, Super Cup was hosted in Porto will not go to Budapest uh, and then they have the other games in Belfast, Helsinki, and Kazan. That's not that important for the next season. You see, it's a very dense video. For the, for the next season, we have that the um, qualifying phase is now single leg. 
except for the Champions League playoffs. Um, and I'm so and so on that. Um, I think you need to condense it, absolutely. Uh, but I'm not necessarily sure that I like that the um, home field is then determined by the draw. I actually think you could use your seeding there, my personal feel. Probably Lusk could profit from that, although they had to they probably get some few uh, points. So, um, Champions League qualifying rounds uh, also start in August uh, with the playoffs on the 22nd and 23rd and 29th and 30th of September. And the third qualifying round is mid September, 15th and 16th of September. So, this is kind of late. This is when usually the Champions League already starts. And then the group stage will be played very condensed. Um, first at the end of October, 20th and 21st, 27th and 28th, 3rd and 4th, 20, uh, and 24th and 25th of November. That's actually a little bit space. So we have actually uh, three weeks in a row. We have Champions League, then we have another three weeks. Then we have November 24th and 25th of November, 1st and 2nd of December, 8th and 9th of December. Very condensed. I have some thoughts that this, um, about this later. And similarly in the Europa League, uh, just on one day, everything there, really all the qualifying phases are played in one game. Will be tricky, I have to say. Um, and now, this is for the club competitions. Let's move national teams. And yeah, UEFA 2020, the first thing is all the whole cities have been confirmed and uh, we have even the dates confirmed. So if you go uh, on euro2020.com, you see all the dates when stuff will play. It's basically shifted by a year and maybe a day because or some, or some, something like that. But that has been taken care of. I think there is a huge uh, burden gone because it was not clear whether all the cities can actually host. Now, uh, Nations League and European qualifier playoffs. This is tricky. So we will see a lot of international soccer coming up. The UEFA Nations League <laughs> will be played now early September from 3rd to 8th, then mid-October from 10th to 14th. And then from the 14th to the 18th November, we have the Nations League. Then we additionally have friendly matches on the 7th and the 8th of October and the 11th and 12th of October. Why the friendly matches there? Because we need to have the European uh, Championship qualifiers right there. You already see this looks very, 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 very condensed. There is a lot of games to, 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 to be played and I wonder how the leagues will compensate more on that a little bit later. Um, I also saw that now the uh, FIFA World Cup qualification then will start as usual in March 21. So yeah, let's see how this how, how this will go with the 22 World Cup being so late. I think we will know all the qualified nations uh, on most Euro European by the end of, 20, of, of 21 and then you have to wait an entire year. So maybe there's a little bit too much rush. I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me, let, me, let me just say this, I think we are, we are done with the update uh, portion. It seems all super condensed and I'm afraid that now we have to make up so much soccer. Yes, there are some games reduced with single legs and, and, and so on, but I honestly would have loved to see this maybe, that you take the Champions League also to neutral venues to have like the uh, pot one teams, they host the group stage. Uh, play three games, it's done. This is how you, I, we don't need more soccer, we need to loosen it up, especially with everything that can still happen. I was also hoping that we see that some of the leagues are getting way, and competitions, especially in Europe, get way too bloated. I think a 20 team league is too big, I think even 18 team league is kind of big already. Although uh, that one you, you can finish by 20 is pushing it. And then you see on the lower leagues, um, we see, I think, 22 in Spain, 24 in England, uh, the second tier. It's too much. What I was really hoping, or I'm still hoping, is not that the big adv uh, advancements out of this corona crisis is that we have fake fans and fake fan noise in uh, empty stadiums. No, but that there's a real rethink on soccer, which has never, it did not happen. Uh, cut the leagues down. Say the, the top uh, side is the top si uh, level size is 16. 
used to be in Serie A 16 and then have only one or two teams relegated. I think it's entirely feasible and uh, allows you a lot more space. You will get a better product out of it because the players will, will be rested. You will get a better uh, product. The way we are going now, we will stay with five substitutes. And um, I don't know how much you've seen. On the top level, this doesn't make too much dif difference. But uh, if you go on the lower level, uh, as soon as the third, fourth and fifth come comes on, there's usually a drop off in quality so far because the squads are not all the steep. I can say it for sure with Lusk that uh, up to 60, 65 minutes, they're great. And then there is the time where we make three changes and from there to all small points are all not all that great anymore. Still good, but it's all not all the all the greatness. I see it also with uh, lower level teams in Germany, uh, where it just doesn't work that well anymore. This is one thing that I would really would have liked to see come out of this Corona crisis. I enjoyed that we had two months not having wall to wall soccer. I'm actually going crazy a little bit now, um, and I will have to reduce it. I love soccer. I love to watch soccer. It's my favorite pastime. But um, now everyday games and da, 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 and the wheel keeps on turning and it gets too much. It lit it it literally gets too much. So I really gotta pick pick and choose. And yesterday was one of the old those days where I had to pick and choose because it just gets too much. So I was really really hoping that there would be a rethink. I also think that cup competitions have to be slimmed down. Um, and simplified, I think the German model, where you have a free draw and one leg games, and uh, even I would go so go so far that uh, the team from the lower tiered league or it, uh, has the home field advantage. I think it's entirely fine, or rank them by the previous standings, previous year sta standings, and then whoever has the lower seat has home, home, home the budget. That makes for an exciting competition. That can actually survive the, uh, revive the cup competitions because yes, I like that in the Coppa Italia, we have then all big teams going in uh, when we get to the semis and so on, uh, but it gets a little bit boring and I think fans are not really appreciating it. Uh, so I think that is one model that I would suggest uh, get rid of all those league cups. I know there's a historic value. Uh, we don't need. I literally think we 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 don't need those, and I probably will make a conscious decision to not cover the English league cup anymore. I think it's a bogus competition that is just there to have another trophy, nothing else. So uh, it's my personal position. France did the way with it. Germany made a shorter format. So yeah. Yes, that's my thoughts. I really was hoping there will be a rethink, but I think everyone tried to uh, now avoid the money crash. Ah, there's another thing, money, the financial fair play rules have been softened. It's not a two year period where the rules apply. So you can uh, soften the blow that you got, which I think is a good thing for the next season. So next season, not that, but then ne the season thereafter, there it will kick in and I think there will be some teams will already have pro problems and there are teams that have already problems. I mean, you see what Barcelona wants to buy and cannot because of their rather stupid um, transfer strategies. Anyway, yeah. In an ideal world, all the top leagues would have 16 teams, I think. That would make 30 match days. You can finish it up quite easily. I think... I would have wished that, at least for the upcoming season, tighten the Champions League, really have the group heads host for a week or two. The group stage, you might even do the first round in one in, at, the, at, the num at the number two seeded team and the second at the number three, at the number one seeded team. Um, but then you can really tighten it up nicely. And yeah, but I guess the calendar is so fixed and no one wants to give up their weekend slots, but I think that would have worked. It's just sometimes we are in, we're living in a time where personal interests largely, largely outweigh common sense. And this is a, something I thought we, the train hit the wall. I think we are still not there. The train hit the bump but it will hit the wall soon. I think players will not survive this long term. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts are on the whole uh, news and how we're gonna continue with the core competitions. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like these. And yeah, 
Hopefully this was the last Corona video and we'll talk to you soon about happier things. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.